Well, as promised, the full Jay-Z's Reptiles full house, full species tour. So there's a bunch if you guys haven't caught on to that quite yet. So we're going to have to break this up a little bit. So we're going to start it off kind of in the room that kind of really got it started, which is the Gecko Cool Room. So we're just going to go around this whole room and we're just going to go through all the species and sew stuff off. Uh, if you guys have, you've probably already watched it because it's one of the more popular videos, but the Gecko Room Tour of last year, last fall, we've already changed a whole lot. And I'll just kind of like quickly go through it. Like, obviously there was a giant pond in the middle of the room. We've changed it out and I'll talk a little bit about that as we get to it. This wall has been updated a little bit. And one of the biggest things is there is lights on pretty much every enclosure in here. Most of them have UVB, not quite all of them do, but there are full lights in almost every single enclosure and there are live plants in almost every single enclosure. Not all necessarily bioactive, but we're making steps. So let's get started right into it. So we're gonna start over on this side over here. And we're just gonna work our way around the room. Um, the Toke Gecko, which just shot back down, but I got some clips of her right before we got going, which is okay. So she's basically a full grown adult Toke Gecko. So this is close to kind of what I want. I would have liked it to be a little bit taller, but this will work for her because I'm not planning on breeding her. She's just going to be, this is my Toke Gecko. So in here, this one doesn't actually have live plants, but we have some nice light on them. Um, this room in itself, if you haven't caught on by the humidifier going, is kept at a lower temperature and higher humidity. The humidity is a little low right now because we've been working in and out of the room and we tidied it up a little bit because, I mean, yeah, poop happens, but I'm not just going to show you a bunch of, like, you know what crusted geckos do to the fronts of cages, so we were kind of working in and out of here a little bit, so it's a little low. But toke geckos, they actually need a little bit warmer temps, and so the light back there kind of helps also give it it's a little bit bigger of a light than I normally would for a lot of these guys. So they have a little bit warmer of a temp in here. Um, also during the summer when it obviously gets very hot, especially this year here in Colorado, we do have an AC unit going normally pretty much 24-7, but I turned off for the purpose of this video so you can actually hear me. So toke gecko, this is an empty skyscraper. A Timor monitor was in here at one point. It's since moved to the arid room because while they're not necessarily an arid species, it's a lot bigger of an enclosure, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, so up here we have our Amazon milk frog. Um, unfortunately, we used to have two and in, in full transparency, we had the really bad heat wave when it very first got started. Our old AC unit was not working. And in the time it took to get a new one to get it set up, it just got too hot in here for these amphibians. Amphibians can be very delicate when it comes to temps. You can't get them hot, period. They just can't do it. Any prolonged temperatures over 85, 86, 87, that can be very life-threatening to them. And unfortunately, one of them didn't make it, which really stinks. I absolutely love these guys, but we still have this one. He's going strong. Hopefully, maybe at some point we can pick another one up. Unfortunately, they're all babies, and you can't mix and match with babies. There we go. All right, here we go. This is our rhino rat snake. She is in the shed right now, so she'll probably be a little mad at me. But there she is, yep. Kind of pale, yep, deep, deep shed in blue. So she's hiding a little bit. Normally she's very nosy and always comes out when I'm messing around. But there's the rhino rat snake. Eventually she will be moving over to another enclosure in here that's empty. And I'm planning on getting a male to put in with her because they're actually one of the few species of snakes that can actually cohabitate fairly well, given enough space, places to hide, places to bask. So, moving right along, as you watch my old man noises make a bunch of creaking stuff, here are our African bullfrogs, or our African painted bullfrogs, or our chubby frogs. Um, all sorts of fun different names for these guys. They're really cool. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily a pair. The other one's underneath this water dish, and I'm not going to dig them out for you guys. Again, you know, in efforts to kind of speed this along a little bit. This is the African painted frog, African chubby frog. And then more popular residents of ours are the tomato frogs. So these guys, um, if you're wondering why they're in such a very tall enclosure, they have never really climbed. I've evidently, some of you guys out there have had them, but they will climb a little bit. 
but they've never once tried to climb, even when I gave them bigger stuff in here to try to crawl up on. They always try to bury under their substrate, and even lately they haven't been at all. So the reason why this is in such a tall enclosure is the screen up here um, was actually broken out. We got it for free. We got a free uh, little exoterra, and so we just kind of half hodgepodge MacGyvered this in there. So, you know, in a, a true arboreal species like a leopard, like a crested gecko or a day gecko would probably be able to get out of this, but these guys don't, and this works really well for the pair of them. So I also gave them these nice big leaf covers for a little bit of added security for them. And while I'm here on the ground, um, we're just going to point it out really quick. This is our lychee gecko, um, our girl, because I have, everyone I guess has girls. Males are actually pretty rare. Um, I think she is pouting right now. She's probably in this log. Um, I don't really want to move it too much, but let's see. Is she in there? Yep, there she is. Our little dinosaur. So these are pretty much as, she's about as big as she gets, and she is a decent size too. Um, wish I could show you the full thing. At some point I'll do a full species spotlight on these lychee geckos. But she is in here in this really cool skyscraper. She'll be by herself. Um, if we ever decide to get another male, um, I don't really know if we will or not. It'll be some time before he'll be ready to breed with her because lychees can be kind of mean to each other a little bit. So moving right along, we will come over here and she was hanging out, but it looks like she's not at the moment. This is our Japanese rat snake, which I think I mentioned in one of our podcasts a little bit. Thought it was a male, probed male. Oh, I forgot to refill our water here really quick. We'll just do it right now while I'm sitting here talking about her. So probe male, thought it was a male. We even picked up an albino uh, female to pair with it. And, uh, well, I'm doing something right because uh, she developed eggs and got egg bound. Let's see, is she under there? Nope. On the hill? Nope, I don't know where she is. Oh, there she is. She's all the way up at the top. So there's there she is. She's still pretty small in all honesty. Um, they're kind of petite rat snakes a little bit compared to like the beauty snakes or something like that. But she definitely should, uh, she probably would have handled those eggs a little bit better if she had a little bit more size on her, which is why we were planning on breeding her, as well as, you know, you know we thought it was a boy. But that's her. Don't have a name for her, unfortunately. But it is what it is. Um, and then up here, we have a few morning geckos. So the if you're wondering what all, like, the little sticky notes and stuff are... Obviously, you see me going on a bunch of tours and running, and they already destroyed the front of this glass. It's, I do the best I can. They're animals. Poop happens. It's what they do. But um, we have some morning geckos running in here. So these guys are for notes for our housekeepers when they are here to kind of, you know, keep an eye on things. For the most part, they really only mess with the furry animals that we have. Um, and the ones outside, but you know, in here that takes a little bit more than just the, you know, the snakes making sure they have water. So that's what these little sticky notes and little things are for. So caution when feeding is because they're morning geckos. They are going to jump out. Um, I don't know if they're, they like to hide. They might find some in here. I'll try to get some B-roll if I can't get a hold of them. But any who's will be. Over here, we have this new, fairly new addition. Actually, I haven't talked about this one very much. This is a Cuban false chameleon. They're actually a type of a knoll, and there he is, tucked away up there. Don't actually know if it's a male or a female. Still a little small to tell. Um, I think they're really cool. I think they're a really cool intermediate species of lizard. Um, they get a fair decent size. They're fairly handleable, at least much more handleable than, like, say, a night knoll. Um, and they still have a lot of the same lizard traits. They'll fluff out that dewlap. They'll sit there and bob their heads. Um, but that's about it. They just need some UVB, a little bit of heat for a basking spot, and that's what they have on here. Um, they don't really drink standing water, but you'll probably notice in a lot of the cages, I still like to add water to all of them, even if they're not going to drink it. It's still going to provide it for them. So, as I said before, we used to have a giant pond in here. The main reason was, number one, I wanted an indoor pond, and number two is it helped with the humidity in here. In fact, I rarely needed to have a humidifier going over here for added humidity, but it took up a lot of space. We were having issues with the pumps um, because gravity kind of helps with a lot of that, and we were having trouble tracking down 
nice, good, really hefty pumps as well as we're kind of on a bit of a budget with doing like 800 other projects at the same time. So I just went and grabbed a 75 gallon tank. Um, that's really all that we need for these guys. Um, and I could never fully, you know, fully decide what type of fish I wanted. I always, I got started with fish to begin with in this whole animal crazy adventure. And I always really liked Oscars, uh, monster fish like arowanas and stingrays and peacock bass and stuff like that. But I knew that wasn't a feasible, uh, option whatsoever or African cichlids. And I always had the most fun interaction with these Oscar cichlids. They're really fun. They have great personalities. Uh, they pout like me. So I decided to go with Oscars for here, but I still do miss my uh, small little Tetras and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I'm doing that too now. Um, over here, we have a little bit of kind of an experiment. Um, picked up some tadpoles as feeders. Um, this one, it might be a leopard frog. Um, he likes to hide all the way in the back. Yeah, he's not up on the little thing. He's, it's a froglet right now. It's turning into a frog. And I don't know if it's going to be a species of uh, leopard frog or bullfrog. It's really small and it's taking a long time to absorb its tail. And I wish I could show it off to you. Maybe I'll get some B-roll of it um, that will throw up as I'm talking about it. But it's just in here with a couple like little rosy minnows and stuff. And if it's a bullfrog, I'm going to have to figure out a little bit bigger of an enclosure for it because bullfrogs, they get pretty big. And I want to give them a little bit more because I'm not just going to release it because they're invasive in Colorado and as well as I wouldn't release an amphibian, period. Um, but if it's a leopard frog, um, I can uh, figure out a little bit better of a better of a larger basking land area for it. But moving right along. Up here, we have... Eh, I don't need the ladder. We'll just talk about it. Um, these are our crimson giant day geckos. We have a pair of females in here. Um, they're really fun. They're kind of spazzy. Definitely not a handleable lizard at all because their defense mechanism is to drop their scale and slough off chunks of skin. Um, but they, I'd like to think they're digging their new little, uh, new little habitat. Uh, hopefully their little new live plants are doing well. Again, these are strictly diurnal species. So, um, I know there's the whole argument and we're, you know, moving closer towards UVB right now, but, uh, as it turns out, these guys need it, period. They need to have it to begin with. But like I said, we're working on UVB for a lot of these guys anyway. So down below, so those are the Crimson Giant Day Geckos. Um, I don't have a species counter and I probably won't do that because that I feel like that's just gonna make me feel absolutely terrible if I sit there and do that. Um, but right below here, this is our, uh, this is frog butt. So this is a crusted gecko. And again, I forgot to put water in here, so I'm going to do that while I'm sitting here talking about it a little bit. Um, see, I'm only human, theoretically, and I do forget stuff. And she was a spazzy little thing as we were cleaning off the glass. Um, frog butt, that's the little colloquial nickname. And we'll water her plants a little bit, too. Um, her colloquial nickname for the crested geckos that drop their tails, we call them frog butts. But, that being said... Um, she's had that nickname for a very long time. She was one of the very first ones that we got that dropped her tail. And she is a menace. She has, uh, unalived several males over her tenure of existence here at Jay-Z's Reptile. So, uh, we only put the largest and most aggressive males in with her. And I'll show you a couple of those too, including the giant male that we have. Uh, and so, but we'll get there when we get there. So right down here and sorry for a little tight closed quarters um we have uh over here we have the standings day geckos so we got these guys as you know a couple week old hatchlings and they are getting pretty big um they're one of our more recent additions along with like the cuban false chameleon um these guys are really cool they're in the same genus as a lot of the other day geckos these guys get pretty big almost the same size as the crimson giants you know, so you know like the largest of the day geckos um but they keep this really cool uh, really cool color on them and they're not quite as spazzy unless like you know you're actually going for them um, and they seem to have really fun little personalities too they like to sit there and death from above the crickets so continuing on along down the road we have a lot of crested geckos and in truth we probably have too many crested geckos because most of them are males too um, I'm not going to sit here and pull them all out for you guys because we've all seen crested geckos. And while, yes, they are cool, um, they're not, you know, anything super, super cool um, or anything crazy like lily whites or xanthics or anything like that. They're just our cool little ones. Um, but, you know, crested gecko, crested gecko, crested gecko, 
This is, um, actually wait, gargoyle. This is the gargoyle gecko, I lied. We have a, gar a red blotch gargoyle gecko up here who is hiding quite a bit. Um, actually, let me go see if he is out. Oh no, I lied, I forgot. We switched, we're moving everything around. I really, I apologize about that. That happens every time I do these videos is that I always forget. So this is a, this is the Cresta Gecko. This is the Gargoyle Gecko and he is hiding. He's tucked back there and I can't really see him very well, which is unfortunate. Um, empty cage, Cresta Gecko. Cresta Gecko boy, Cresta Gecko girl, I threw this on there. So, um, so that way we don't have the boys, you know, kind of rougher up a little bit because uh, lizard procreation can be kind of uh, grapey with a silent G. Uh, it's kind of, it's a little, a little scary if you haven't looked at it uh, firsthand yet. And then down here, they're, on the, they're probably hiding, unfortunately. This is our flying gecko. Um, we just have the single one, which is okay. Um, I think it would be kind of cool eventually if I had, you know, unlimited space to get, you know, a small colony of these going and put them in like one of the larger exoterras and maybe to see if we can end up getting some breeding because I think they're really, really cool. It's just a small little oddball gecko. And then, like I said, I'll, if I can get some B-roll of them, I'll throw them up here so that way you guys can actually see them too. And then here we have our little peacock day gecko. So these ones are a lot smaller and let's see if I can get in there. There we go. So these guys are really fun. Whoop, there we go. These peacock day geckos. So they're in the same genus as the other big crimson giant, the crimson day geckos and the giant day geckos. These guys are really fun. This one actually got out and escaped and was living in my car for a little while, uh, but we got her. At least I think it's a girl. Um, and then here we have, uh, so I've actually kept this kind of quiet a little bit and I apologize for the creaking of uh, my little stool here. Um, I actually kept this kind of quiet. This was pretty much the only people who knew about the existence of these ones uh, were some Patreon uh, uh, pledgers, patrons, Patreon patrons, as well as uh, somebody who I did a little bit of like a wholesale trade agreement with. Um, but this one we held on to because he has a little bit of kind of a crooked back. Um, and it, I didn't feel really like comfortable or okay with him going off or, or us selling him. So he has still just, you know, just kind of this weird crooked little back. And he eats fine, lives fine, just fine. And maybe one day if someone decides they want to keep him as like a single pet, um, that's maybe something I'll think about. But for the time being, he's just here. He loves his bloodworms and things like that. But he's really cool. And then we'll continue along with the rest of the Merry Gecko Bunch. Um, over here, Cresta Gecko, Cresta Gecko. This one's actually really cool. Let me move get this out of the wee. He's really dark. He's not an exanthic, but he's this kind of cool chocolatey looking color that I've always really liked. And then let's see if I can zoom in on him a little bit. There he is. You can see his butt. He's another little frog butt. A lot of them are frog butts, honestly. Oh, excuse me. Okay. But it is what it is. Um, this is another gargoyle gecko. We have a pair technically, but the male kind of has a bit of a spinal deformity. Um, and he's been featured in another, in a couple of our videos and I'll probably get some old stock photo of him if I can. But this girl, she is just a striped reticulated looking one and she just kind of has like more of the normal wild type coloration. So nothing crazy, nothing like the Dracula or, um, any of those other fun little ones. And Ooh, yeah, it's starting to warm up in here. So I'm going to go turn this on, maybe on low cool, cool it down a little bit. So I apologize if it gets a little bit loud, but I don't want it to get super warm in here. I knew this was going to take a while, so meh. Um, another crested gecko right here. You can see we kind of have a mix of live plants and uh, fake plants and sticks and branches. Lots of cover for them to hide in. It goes for pretty much all of these species. Um, in here we have our tiger leg frog. Um, he usually will hide on the underside of these leaves. There he is. He just flopped right down. So there he is right there. Um, they're really cool. They're a fun little tree fog. They're pretty nocturnal. I'm um, sorry for dropping just like that. Normally they stick to it. Um, but I think I just woke him up, unfortunately. They're really cool. Um, they can go from kind of like a, a more bright, a brighter-ish green. And I apologize for the dog barking in the background. Um, but they're usually kind of a 
darker color versus like the super bright green of like the red-eyed tree frogs. We have a hard um, cut here, and again, I apologize for the creaking. These are our two largest male crested geckos. Um, he is hiding a little bit in here, but I'm not gonna open it because they will absolutely jump out. Uh, but this right here is Hermes. He is a monster. Um, so for reference, there's my hand. <laughs> there he goes. Um, but if you saw it really quick, he's the size of my hand. He is a huge crested gecko. He weighs more than most gargoyle geckos. So he is a bit of a monster. He's our old dude. He's a bank of the bank. I think he's about seven, seven-ish years old, but that's him. That's Hermes, our big old boy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, there we go. I love that little close-up of him. So moving right along, again, apologize for the creaking. This is the Chinese cave gecko. Um, he hides pretty much all the time. I'm not gonna sit here and dig him out, it's okay. Um, and then over here, we have another new addition, which I'm gonna throw up some stock photos right here. This is our brand new crocodile gecko. Um, these guys are really cool, great oddball species. Um, they like a little bit of warmth too. They come from, I'm getting a lot of mixed, re I, this is the first time I've kept them and I've got a lot of mixed uh, research on them, so I'm gonna keep on digging, but the consensus seems to be that they like to hide, they like it a little bit warm, they're still pretty nocturnal, um, so a little bit of a basking bulb up there for him to get the temp a little bit better, and yeah, that's about it. But I'm gonna keep you updated and give you some nice, good, solid uh, information on them because I don't like that conflicting stuff, so it's gonna take a little bit more diving into it just to be sure as these, but it's not like these guys are gonna be neglected or you know dying very quickly. I just wanna really dial that in and it'll take me about a week or so to fully do that. Um, and then right here, so as I said before, um, I really miss my small little community tetras. I always thought it was really cool to be able to have, as you can probably see the camera person in the background here, uh, and the reflection of the glass. <laughs> um, but I always thought it'd be really cool to have just a tank with a bunch of, uh, a, nice, a nice big school or two of community fish. And I am working on that, but you can't overload a fish tank at once. And so we have, a couple cardinal tetras and we'll get more. Um, there's a couple of emerald eye tetras that are sitting there in the back. Um, there is a little Siamese algae eater and I actually called it correctly this time. There is a Siamese in Chinese and this is a Siamese. There is quite a difference um, and I feel very foolish because I've been calling it Chinese for most of the day. As well as we have this really cool snail. Um, this is a rabbit snail. They come in a couple different colors. Um, these ones don't reproduce on their own. They do need a male and a female, so I'm not gonna have to worry about these guys overcrowding in the tank. And they're pretty active and uh, yeah, uh, there's like yellow, there's spotted, there's black. We got a black one. Basically, I left it up to my friend to just say, I uh, like, all right, uh, find me some really cool ones right now because we don't have too many cardinals. And so this is what we ended up with as well as just a couple live plants. Moving right down below, we have another crested gecko. Another crested gecko, another crested gecko. This is actually a paludarium or however you pronounce that with a little water down there. I don't have anything living in there right now. Um, maybe one day we'll see. Um, in here we have some Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Um, they can be used as feeders. I would only give it to some of the larger lizards like the, um, like the, like the smaller little ones there I could give to the Aki. Um, like the small one to the Aki, the bigger one to the Bearded Dragon because it has a bigger head. But they just mostly are there for fun because I think some bu like bugs are kind of cool. So let's just get some hissing cockroaches, right? Um, over here we just have empty tank that I use for um, just kind of putting animals in when I'm moving around or cleaning cages in here if I don't have like a spare tub. Um, this was our actual only hold back. Um, this is a melanistic axolotl. So if you remember from... Uh, like the black snakes video, these guys have an excess of melanin versus that wild type of the wonky backed one. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, they're, I keep them in a bear tank. I know they can do fine with a lot of the other stuff, but I do worry about them ingesting other things. And so I just kind of keep them bare and then I just make sure that their water stays nice and cool, nice and clean. Because truthfully, my house gets a little bit warm for those axolotls. So in this room, it works really well for amphibians, period. So almost done we're just going to keep on going really quick this is the albino japanese rat snake enclosure so um if any of you saw the previous one about here it was in a smaller one this one's a little bit better for it might be good for its whole life i haven't fully decided yet uh she likes to hide she is under her little pink hide right there if you can kind of see her 
There she is. I don't know if we can, yep, there, yep, right there. Can't see her eye, but that's her. Just a really cool bright yellow snake. Um, I'll pop her off really quick. We'll see if she'll tolerate me doing this. Cage lock and a weight. Don't like snakes getting out. Uh, can't really call the show off video unless I show them off, right? Well, that's her. Um, the female that we got for our what we thought was a male possible head albino. Now we have two girls. So, hooray! But that's okay. We have a friend of ours who uh, does have a couple male Japanese rat snakes. Um, and actually did have some viable ones and they're still sitting in the incubator as of right now. That maybe eventually we'll do with something of like a little breeding loan or something like that. Um, and we'll just can kind of continue as we go. Here we have the tiger salamanders that we recently just talked about. They got a little bit of an upgrade because uh, honestly they were in a little bit too small of an enclosure. And there's nothing I can do about them getting their water dirty. But there's the chunky little monkeys. Yes, they are kind of chunky. Yes, they are on a diet. Uh, but they're doing pretty good. Get your tail in there. Get your tail in there. There we go. Love these hefty ones right here. They're really cool. They're a little bit larger than a 41 quart. They have a wider space here. They're a little bit deeper. And I love these locking lids. Works really, really well. So, down here. I've not talked about this one very much, but uh, spare tub here, apologies. Um, he actually came to us from our, all right, we'll just put it over there, from our friends, nature's educators that uh, didn't have a whole lot of room for him. But this is a Florida banded water snake. Um, these are really cool. There he is, right there. These are really cool. Oh, and look, there's still a couple little fish swimming around in there for him. Um, these guys are really cool if you want a species of snake that you never have to feed uh, rodents to. I know some people you can do that with like garter snakes and stuff, but spe the feeding specifically and exclusively fish to garter snakes can sometimes lead to neurological issues. Water snakes in the wild almost exclusively eat fish. And so that's Sir Hiss. He's a little Florida banded water snake, Nerodia. Um, hissy, like to bite, like to poop on you. So I don't really mess with him a whole lot but I like to give him a nice big open space, a giant tub if you saw how big that tub was of water, and I just like to let him live out his life um, as that. Maybe eventually I can have him as an ambassador animal, but right now he absolutely hates me, so. All right, and then last and certainly not least in here, we'll see how bad he trashed his water already, uh, cause that's what he does. We have our marine toad. Oh, right, I forgot. Ah, here we go. So. Uh, it seems like it's pretty bare, but these guys just rip up and tear everything. So he is in this kind of bare enclosure right here. But this is him. He is a male. He can get a lot larger than this. They're one of the largest species of toad frog, period. Um, and I'm going to have to change his water out again. That's why, uh, if you notice, they have a couple just different buckets around this room. It's all water that's just kind of sitting out and dechlorinating in different stages to change out for the amphibians water, for the different gecko waters, for the axolotls and things like that, uh, because hard tap water is not great for those. Uh, but his substrate is just a mix of topsoil, eco-earth, and uh, play sand. And it's because they like a little bit kind of sandy, they like to dig down a little bit, and he has some sphagnus moss and coconut under there. Um, and as you can see, he's hopped along and smeared all of that, probably when I like pulled him in and out. but. That's him. He's pretty cool. I like him a lot. He doesn't like me. He likes to pee on me a lot, but that's really okay. So that is the gecko room as of right now. Always changing stuff, as I've said more than once. Um, always trying to improve on things. Um, it took a lot to get lights on everything as before. That was always one of the things that I was always a little uh, upset about. I might have to, all right, oh, that's cool. Um, that we didn't have lights and stuff on a lot of these guys, even though they don't necessarily need it, or at least that was the consensus that the reptile community had for a long time. But we're making strides, making improvements. So here you go. This is part one, and this is probably one of the longer ones um, of all of Jay Z's and Jay Z's reptiles animals in here. So this is Gecko Room, the cool room, part one. Now let's move on to the next area.